Uh, welcome back to theCUBE coverage of AWS reInvent Executive Summit presented by Accenture. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here joined by two great guests, Leo Barella, Chief Technology Officer at Takeda, Don Hellinger, Managing Director at Accenture. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. So last year, Carl Hick joined us to discuss the case cloud journey. I know a lot's gone by, the pandemic didn't go away as fast as we hoped, but we're starting to see visibility of the future with cloud and everyone seeing cloud scale, um, it's refactoring of business models, new opportunities, how's it going? Well, I think it's uh, it's going wonderful uh, as planned actually. Um, I can I can share with you that um, there are definitely some lessons learned. Uh, while the plan was uh, you know was quite structured, uh, we definitely discovered that uh, maybe we should have actually hedged about fifty percent of our time uh, in the planning for organizational change management and communication, and because we definitely uh, want to uh, be able to kind of explain why. Uh, moving to cloud is actually important to to, to our business, uh, and so so if you were to actually do it again, uh, I think we would probably put a lot more time in communicating the value of the program. And while basically now uh, we're going to be able to to move a lot faster than uh, than a year ago, uh, I think that the community of Takeda is uh, is really you know come come around uh, to to truly understand the value of uh, of, uh, of moving to cloud. You know, last year, Andy Jassy gave up on stage the keys to success for the cloud journey. You guys were in the middle of it. Um, what was the big takeaway um, on, the, on, on your, your journey? Because a lot of people are, are having real situational awareness and doubling down on successes, identifying what's not working and being real agile. This has been the big aha. Uh -huh. What's the big aha uh -huh moments you had uh, this year? Well, I can tell you that aside from the, the migration of our applications to cloud, which, we, which is basically table stakes for the elimination of our data centers. So at the end of the program, we're likely going to retain only few applications in our data centers, but move more than 80% of our application workloads to cloud. What we're actually most excited about is, uh, is really our new uh, strategy around data as a digital platform enabler. Uh, so from now on, uh, we're, we're really going to be focusing on the value stream of Takeda, uh, the understanding of, of digital platforms that we actually want to build to, to, to further consolidate um, and um, a, a, you know and globally expand uh, the, the, the technologies that we have, but all built on a data foundation uh, that, that is actually governed across the community of Takeda. So data actually becomes the center of our strategy. Uh, and, and then digital is basically just a way for us to actually interact with data uh, and which includes applications such as machine learning and AI, which we were heavily investing in and, uh, and we definitely plan on uh, leveraging more and more. And just a real quick, before we go to Accenture for a second, I want to just double down on that journey dynamics because we're seeing and we've been reporting and the theme here this year at reInvent is multiple workloads in the cloud, changing workloads, the evolution of workloads, data as the center of it, and then this cultural shift where you got the, you know, these modern applications at the top of the stack. So you were AI is contributing. So you got three major innovation theaters kind of exploding. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty, I mean, one of those is, is mind blowing, Never mind all three. Yeah, and I can tell you that, uh, you know, um, I'd like to actually even further expand the circle uh, beyond Takeda. We don't necessarily believe that a digital transformation is just about our own enterprise. That is definitely, uh, fundamental, uh, but the digital transformation is truly about um, connecting Takeda as a digital uh, pharmaceutical company to the overall healthcare ecosystem and be able to basically transact with our partners uh, in real time, which is the reason why we actually put data at the center because at the end of the day, uh, when other partners wants to interact with our data, they should in real time be able to transact as if they were transacting on their own systems with our own data, especially the ACPs and patients. Great call, Don, your, your reaction because a lot of learnings, new opportunities, <laughs> you're at the center of it, Accenture's doing a lot of great work, we've been documenting a lot of it as well. What's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, I just to amplify a lot of Leo's comments already, I think, you know, if I, if I think back and in, in on this journey with, with Takeda and AWS and Accenture as the power of three, I think, you know, leaning in 
to that has been a, a recipe for success. So as Leo said, we've definitely had some lessons learned, but you know, being there with this power of three, I think has been uh, enabling us to uh, attack those challenges that have, uh, that have come up and, and really gotten ahead of those. I think the other thing you talked about is just, um, you know, all these different things coming together. You know, before the pandemic, we had uh, done, done some research at Accenture that kind of had two groups of companies with the leader, leaders and the laggards. And uh, it showed, you know, the, the difference in revenue growth of the le leaders that adopt technology and those that are falling behind. And really, um, that gap has widened, but there's a new entrance of companies that have uh, emerged, which is the leapfroggers, the ones that take advantage of all of the things like uh, AWS has to offer in terms of the AI capabilities, the data capabilities, the foundational elements that are enabling them to really do this compressed transformation journey in a much shorter timeline. And I think that's been the element that, uh, you know, I think Leo, you and I have seen uh, firsthand together with our AWS colleagues you know, of us being able to really do this on a, a pace that I think has just been un, un, uh, unseen or unmatched in, in the past. Yeah, before we get to the innovation pilots you guys are doing, I want to just jump on that, that, that topic for a quick second, Don, if you don't mind. That's a really important point. I think the people who shifted to the cloud and replatformed and then learned all the goodness and then refactored their businesses have done great. This notion of leapfrogging is people who move and say, hey, I don't need, I'm going to replatform and refactor at the same time, get the learnings from others. Okay, they get the best practices. <laughs> so what's the, the scar tissue from all the pioneers who have been playing in the cloud who got the benefits are also paving the path for others. This is actually a motivating cultural and personal kind of impact. Motivation, people are happier. What's your guys' reaction to this culture of the cloud, this cloud leapfrogging and refactoring? Yeah, I mean, uh, what I'm seeing uh, and, and love, Leo, your perspective on this too, but frankly, yeah, I think uh, yeah, with with the, uh, the war on talent right now that's out there, I think, you know, companies are, are investing, whether they're leaders, whether they're leapfroggers in this digital, uh, you know, platform, I think are attracting the best talent and actually making it a place where people can innovate. And I know we're going to talk about some of the innovations here in a second, but you know, I think that is, um, you know, some, a, a way to differentiate uh, right now in the marketplace, given everything that we're seeing around uh, retention and attraction of talent. I mean, being able to be on the front edge uh, of this is is quite critical in in any company's view, but you know especially when you're trying to attract uh, the best talent in in uh, developing uh, medicines that that actually save lives. Leo, jumping on this wave and moving leapfrogging, what's your perspective on this? Yeah, you know I agree that uh, you know talent is uh, talent is key, uh, and quite frankly, uh, you know Takeda we've been a you know pharmaceutical company for the past 240 years. Uh, and now we're actually really, uh, you know, starting to become a, a digital um, pharmaceutical uh, power. Uh, and, and so uh, part of the attractiveness of, uh, of joining Takeda, for instance, is the fact that uh, not only you actually get to, uh, you know, um, be with a company that is investing heavily uh, in, in, in digital reskilling and actually training of people, but also you're connected to the mission of, uh, of literally saving, saving lives, right? So basically the, uh, the, the, the connection of really this transformation to become a digital superpower, uh, and also uh, the the mission of uh, of really finding new medicines for uh, for people that actually experience, you know, for instance, you know, rare disease, uh, it, it's quite exciting because it's uh, it's the application of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, where now you're actually really trying to find someone that is that is struggling, uh, and, and we're now actually connecting them to a cure that that is drastically changing their their lifestyle. It's interesting, the agil agility and the speed of innovation really kind of puts away the old analysis of like, what's the payback? I mean, if you, do, if you can't see the value right away, then, you're not, you, then you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Basically people in the cloud that say, I can contribute and leapfrog and get that value. This has been a big part of the business model. And one of the, the ways people are doing it is just getting involved, starting pilots, doing the projects. Um, so I'd like to have you guys share the project that, that you guys have got going on with NurseLine. Can you share, what you're trying to achieve and how has the cloud enabled you to, to innovate, but also capture the value and can, and can you see it? Is there, is there a big analysis? There's like a big payback. It's like you're buying this 20 year project or well, how do you guys look at this? I mean, uh, the nimbleness of, uh, of cloud uh, and our ability to kind of you know, fail fast is what's extremely attractive to, uh, to, to the business, right? Because uh, now all of a sudden, 
uh, we can quickly uh, spin up a, a prototype. Uh, we can quickly actually put it out as a product and actually see how effective it is compared to uh, traditional processes. Uh, so for instance, nurse line is actually what we, uh, it's one of the many uh, innovation initiatives that we actually have going on, but it's specifically addressing uh, one of our um, uh, therapy areas, which is uh, our plasma derived therapies. Uh, plasma derived therapies is actually, uh, the, the supply chain actually really starts with uh, the goodwill uh, of a individual like yourself, uh, deciding to actually you know, donate plasma that eventually is being processed and fractionated to, to, to deliver medicines that are life savings. In most cases, actually, they're, they're literally life saving. Um, and uh, so what we're trying to do is actually really make that experience as flawless as, uh, and as seamless as possible. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have ever experienced, you know, going into Amazon Go, uh, where you kind of, you know, walk in, you get some groceries and walk out and don't pass through a register. And uh, it's the same type of an experience that we actually want to provide where uh, in the past, um, when you're actually donating plasma, obviously it's a, it's a fairly invasive, you know, procedure because you know, obviously you need to actually, you know, be in, be in a bed and your, your plasma is, is, is getting extracted. But there's a lot of paperwork that you need to actually fill in. And, uh, and what we actually did uh, is now actually enable that through a digital experience where uh, a donor uh, that is actually approaching the center can now in actually initiate a chat with, uh, with Amazon Connect via Alex. Uh, and then uh, depending on the priority, uh, the donor is kind of assigned to a nurse that uh, is, it can actually be anywhere in the country. Uh, and all of a sudden the nurse can actually initiate uh, through, through Amazon Connect um, a dialogue with the, you know, with, with the donor, uh, answering some of the questions in the, you know, in the regular questionnaire. So, so now all of a sudden the nurse is actually filling up the paperwork for you. Uh, and, and, uh, and that is actually done through the initiation of a video call uh, and we're actually using Chime uh, which is again uh, part of like you know the, the you know the, the, the Amazon uh, you know AWS services, and then basically upon the the completion of uh, of the questionnaire, there is actually an electronic signature that is being applied to um, you know to the form, uh, and so uh, this is actually all happening while basically the person is actually walking to the center, walking into the center, uh, and and all of a sudden the only thing that they need to do is actually having a sign bed and uh, and actually initiate the process of uh, of plasma donation. So all of this is actually done through microservices. Uh, now, everything that we do now is actually API enabled. And, you know, obviously like many other companies right now, we're actually really thinking about microservices and the reusability of, of technology and, and, and reusable components. So we're extremely excited about the fact that now uh, that experience can actually be carried on uh, to, to other parts of the business and that, that, that can actually leverage the, you know, these technologies. That's a great example of refactoring. What's next for you guys, AWS and Accenture? What's the plans? Well, again, well, uh, I, um, you go, go ahead, Don. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I think, you know, we, we started touching on it, uh, experience, right? And uh, how do we embed more technology experiences that we're all used to? I mean, you know, to get into some of the return to office, the easiest way for me to do some of the COVID testing has been using my, uh, my uh, trusty iPhone, right? And so as, as Leo talked about that experience, uh, part of this beyond just the therapies and, and attracting donors is, is really key for any business to, to, to succeed and thrive. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, if you think about, um, you've got the natives that are really more technology based, you've got the, the Pelotons of the world that obviously have, you know, a platform, but also a product. You're going to see product and specifically life sciences companies get more into platform enabled uh, services that they can provide outside uh, as a, a service to others. And I think, um, you know, the, the platform uh, experience and, and the user experience, the donor experience, all that, I'd say innovating in, in more use cases, like uh, some of the ones you just heard, that's what's next and being able to uh, use those APIs more even externally to, uh, to do even more good for society. Um, Leo, your thoughts, what's next? Well, um, you know, we're actually just, just getting started, right? So it's not, uh, you know, this transformation is now cloud enabled, uh, but, but we're, we're systematically actually going through our value chain uh, and trying to truly understand, uh, you know, our customers, you know, again, as a business, we don't actually sell directly to consumers. So we, we're, we're basically brokering through, but primarily through HCPs and hospitals, right? To basically be able to diagnose uh, a disease that can actually be cured with our products. Uh, and we do feel that, uh, you know, that there is actually a huge role that we, Takeda can actually play because obviously we are experts in the field of, uh, 
you know, of the disease that we actually cure with our products. So basically the interactions like uh, the one that I just described with NurseLine uh, can actually be directed, uh, you know, not only to the HCPs, but also to, to the patients uh, and the access to communities. Uh, and so we want to actually continue to provide platforms by which, you know, people that have experienced, you know, especially rare disease can now actually really connect and, uh, and, 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 and share, um, you know, the, the, the sense of community that, that, that basically is, is, is so, so very important, right, for someone that basically has, uh, you know, the diseases that we cure. So again, um, I think that the systematic approach of APIs and actually making sure that the data is actually ready for, say, the FDA to actually consume, to accelerate the clinical trials or to an hospital to kind of really understand if there is maybe a clinical trial that can be applied to one of the patients that is that is actually showing some uh, some side effects that uh, you know or, or, or symptoms, right? That basically can be cured with you know with our with our products. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, ultimately the, the value that we can provide to society. So, and you guys are a great work and a great example. And to me, and this really showcases the management philosophy of cloud and the culture of cloud, where you take something like Connect and you can refactor and reconfigure these existing resources in a way that creates value that saves lives. And this is the new, this is the new playbook. Congratulations mm -hmm. on an exceptional story. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Okay, Thanks. this is theCUBE's coverage of Avis reInvent Executive Summit presented by Accenture. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.